All right, today it's cold outside. I don't have a shop, it's a garage, it's not heated. But when the wife asks, the wife has to get. So she wants a um, Christmas tree box or something like that, which is gonna go underneath the Christmas tree, little place, it's gonna bring it up a little bit, decorative thing. She's gonna paint it or stain it or whatever she wants to do. Um, so I'm gonna build that. So come along with me and uh, let's have some fun. Easy peasy. The key word here is easy as pie. Cause I don't wanna spend a lot of time on this. It's cold outside. And you'll see my handy dandy uh, workbench, which is not a workbench, but a fold out uh, picnic table. And that's what we're working on today. Let's go. Welcome back to the channel. Thanks for stopping in. I appreciate you. So starting off, just breaking down some lumber. Uh, it is 4S lumber. It's the cheap pine stuff from Lowe's. And it had some nasty knots in a couple spots and some cracking in a couple spots. But we'll be sure to avoid those, cut them out as best we can. I did not have drawn out plans for this project like a bunch of my projects. So this one... Uh, the base of my Christmas tree is 21 and a half inches, and I thought that was a good small portion of the box. You'll see it's a taper box. And I just thought 24 inches or two feet would have been a nice round number. And also it'll give me all four sides out of these five pieces of lumber. This is five pieces of one by four, and it's giving me all four of my sides. I'm clamping them together on that line I drew on each board at the two foot mark. And then for my taper, I'm just going to come in from each side an inch and a quarter, and that will give me my spot, my 21 and a, a half. Just trying to keep the proportions decent, decently proportioned with the Christmas tree itself. And you'll see I am going to be breaking down or, or doing all my cuts essentially with the track saw. If you've been to my channel before, you know I don't have a table saw. Um, building up to that, hopefully eventually. But all these cuts will be made with a track saw. It's nice to clamp the pieces together. Keeps all those lines flowing nice and, and even the taper came out fantastic. I believe that the track saw is probably one of my best investments that I've ever made in a tool. I don't know what I did right there, lifting the blade up and then moving the saw and then putting it back down, which left a little lip that I had to recut. But I'm showing you here real quick, but all those cuts came out fantastic. And again, the super low budget, I end up using some screws that I had in, in, on hand. Um, but I think all in all, the lumber cost $70 or $80 maybe. Um, and I bought a new tub, a new small tub of glue. <laughs> so very, very budget friendly. On this next cut, all I am doing is actually using the pieces, the top and the bottom of the five boards. And I use that to find the dimensions for my next panel because I wanted these two to be the same size. On the next two, uh, that's not actually shown, I end up um, increasing that panel by the two boards widths. So it's an inch by f uh, one by four. I ended up butting two of those together and making that box a little wider so that the interior is square. If I'd kept them all the same, it would have been more of a rectangle. Now I think uh, uh, originally my plan was not to build the frame that you'll see coming up later in the video. So I just wanted a way to hold these together so that I could get them glued up on the edges. And I had some scrap quarter inch plywood and I ended up just stripping those at about inch and a half or two inches and stapling it together. 
And I did check that first one, just for everybody's information, and it was fine, didn't poke through, but I did find out later that obviously these boards are not the same thickness, and my small brads ended up poking through on some spots, and on others it actually ended up just blowing out some of the wood. Uh, so it didn't come all the way through, it just bowed the wood out, which some sanding fixed. And then on each of my pieces, I did round over the four edges. Um, I think that ends up looking a little better and, and hides some of the flaws. This wood will move, even though it's 4S and pine and all that, it, it, it does move and climatize to the home so that each one of the boards I broke down the edge and just rounded it over a tiny bit. And that's also a reason I did not glue those quarter inch strips. I just used brads because again, like I said, it's just to hold it, uh, hopefully reduce the moving over time, but I didn't want to tack them too, too firmly because then it'll cause a bunch of craziness if, if it does end up moving a lot. I did glue the edges and I bratted each board into its partner on the side with two brads, the glue again will hold all that. I am not using the brads as structure, just more like clamps. I will tell you there's a little racking when it's wet uh, that you may see in the video, I'm not sure if it comes across, uh, but once it was actually glued up the next day, it was solid. That sucker did not move and it felt really, really good. The box ends up being 18 inches high uh, and we put uh, some books or a box underneath the Christmas tree uh, prior to it being uh, fully outfitted with all the decorations to see what height we wanted and it became to about nine and a half inches. Uh, I decided to make it 10 inches on the inside of the box and so I'm actually just going to put some side braces in there and I'm going to cut this three quarter inch plywood, also some scrap I had, uh, so you'll have to factor that into the cost should you need that material. But the uh, platform ends up being, the top of the platform is 10 inches above the ground. I just used my little square there as a, a guide for the size of those little blocks. Uh, no rhyme or reason, they're just holding the platform. Uh, you'll see I'm just screwing them in. The Christmas tree we have is not very large and not shown on the video. I end up standing inside of this box and it's plenty strong. It's holding my 250 pound self. So not worried about our little Christmas tree. I just used two of the blocks, put them together uh, where I found my line at the top of that box. That's going to be the 10 inch mark. Removed the top spacer and drew another line on the bottom ones. Again, I was going to measure it out because three quarter inch plywood is not three quarter inch plywood. And I was just wanting a good line. My screws did go through that quarter inch strip and into the panel of wood itself. So uh, make sure it's biting really well. Like I said, I tried to, to even break these off at one point or, or, you know, manhandle it to come off and they were solid. Pre-drilled, put them in there, no glue, perfectly fine. I did put a quarter inch little piece in there because I thought I was going to add another screw, but like I said, after feeling it and testing it, I didn't think it was necessary. I'm cutting that panel to go inside the box. I don't have any scrap wood that is long enough. I checked my box for square. It was right on the money, perfect. And I just, not that it was actually necessary. I just wanted to uh, add in another strip of three quarter inch 
uh, wood right there just so it would meet the corner um, so it'll, you'll see it I left one corner open because uh, I wasn't going to cut another small block and glue it in there it's, it just wasn't necessary checking for square on that and I'll line up my one edge glue it together Another tool I'll say is fantastic to have is, is a battery powered brad nailer. <laughs> I really, really, I got this one uh, luckily uh, through a friend. Um, but yeah, if you can get one, uh, I plan on getting the Milwaukee ones, uh, the brad and the finishing nailer, and maybe make a video of that one day, but really enjoyed the ease of using that little bradder rather than pulling out the compressor and, and doing all that. Here I am working on my corners. So I originally was not, like I said, you'll see the, that I actually end up framing out each panel. That was not the plan originally. Originally I was just gonna do some corners here. Uh, I found the angle uh, by laying the wood on the box, um, getting the sides even and then marking my angles at the top of the bottom and the one is a, a one by four and the other piece is a one by three just so that the reveal is the same on each panel because I'm overlapping one side as you can see there and I batched these out the same way uh, as I actually cut the panels, I kept the pieces together, um, used the track saw, getting nice and steady, watched any binding, I didn't have any issues with, you know, the, the saw catching or, or trying to kick the wood at all, it just put the saw in the middle, plunged down and finished out the cut on the back, on the far end. Same thing with those ones, I did use my Milwaukee Random Orbital Sander. Uh, I need to really invest in a better sander as well, but I used that with some, um, I don't recall if it was 180, I'm sorry, 80 grit or 120, uh, but I did break down and round over all those edges as well. And for this one, I'm just using some pocket hole screws. Uh, I did not want to try and hold that panel and shoot a brad in there. Um, so I do glue these and the, use the screws as clamps. Worked out great. those together make sure to keep the edges aligned properly each one will be specific you can you can make them and then obviously you'll two of them are the same and the two for the opposite ends are the same and at some point there I decided you know what I think it's gonna look better framed out I actually was two pieces of six foot one by three short uh, so I ended up gluing everything it got a, a little cold to be out in the garage and the next morning I ran two lows, got two more of those pieces of wood. Uh, you see them on the table there and I'll cut them up using pocket hole screws and I'm going to build the frame portion of the box. And as I said before, this wood will m move a little bit. Um, so I'm actually building these two to be independent of each other. Um, one, it was easier to finish that way. Uh, and number two, should the wood move and anything, I can essentially rebuild this box inside the frame uh, should we not like it. 
if that makes sense. So I will actually keep the frame itself and then I could do the same panels that I did uh, securing them directly to the frame rather than building a separate box that slides into this frame that I'm, I'm working on now. On this first cut, I'm actually just trying to get the angle uh, to be the same. I did check this on that frame and my test cuts. And then after this, I'll cut these individually. Uh, that's probably the sketchiest cuts to try and make with a track saw. Uh, but again, I would say clamp your material down if you're going to try it. Do it at your own risk. I put these down, then I put the track on top, and I am just plunging into the wood. I'm actually not trying to slide the track saw. You'll see those cuts. Uh, I think it's still on the footage here in a little bit. But again, just be careful or invest in the proper tools and don't be an uh, idiot like me. did build this frame box uh, decently tight. I wanted it to be a press fit uh, to get the two boxes into each other. And then I did, you'll see, I, I do, I don't think I show a lot of footage of it, but I do uh, use my um, belt sander to even out the top a little bit and I will end up breaking the corners of the main inside structure uh, just to make it easier to slide in and you won't see it it gets covered up by the corners of the outer box or frame panels whatever you want to call it um, I do use that belt sander um, on the corners and knock them down uh, could have done the same thing if maybe I had a chamfer bit or something for my router but I do, I do not Another thing you could do, uh, should you have some issues, our tree ended up being okay, or you're worried about the box tilting over or being top heavy, ours is not, it's completely stable, it's up right now, um, is you could put a panel on the bottom of this box and uh, use some weights or maybe sandbags um, to weight the box down and then secure uh, the tree into the panel. For example, put screws into the panel into the edges of the box and then use maybe some pipe clamps or something to secure the, the tree base itself down. But our tree doesn't have that necessity. It is super stable. On this outer box, I did, again, break down every edge. I spent a decent amount of time sanding this one. Uh, it is the one that you see the most. Um, so every corner got rounded over. Um, that's me with the belt sander, just breaking down those edges. Uh, one mistake I made here is I went a little too far in with the belt sander and then spend enough time moving up the grits to get some of those harder belt sander lines out. So when my wife stained the item, uh, the box uh, you saw those a little bit it wasn't too bad there was only it, it wasn't showing a lot but um, I do you know we could always take it apart again and and um, refinish it and I can do a proper job sanding and this is me just showing you that's the panel it just sits in there 
Um, it ends up not looking too bad. I'm not going to put a cap on there. I think later in the video I do say I'm going to maybe put a cap on there. Um, again, my wife filled in the, the tree box with some garland or whatever you call that stuff. And it really looks nice. So. Also, I did spend more time sanding, not caught on footage, uh, for some of the, the filler holes that you see there on the front. Oh. So, there it is. Finished. It's not stained or painted. Uh, that's going to be the wife's job. I'm going to probably do a little bit uh, of a cap up here or something. But that's it. Super simple. Super easy. Broke those edges. And that's it. You can build it. You can do it. Bye! And there it is stained. Thank you for watching. Appreciate it. Give me a thumbs up if you liked it. And hope to see you back here. Take care.